Right. <laughs> this is my 10th week at NASA as a full-time employee. I had three uh, uh, co-op tours before this, all at Kennedy. And I just want to say thank you to all the presenters for sharing their knowledge and their wisdom. You absolutely did not waste any of your time. I can tell you that um, going forward in the next generation. Um, so thank you for, for your wisdom. Uh, growing up on Long Island, I was right next to New York City, and we kind of thought we were in the center of our world out there. Um, I was very aloof from everything going on at NASA, to be quite honest with you, and I really didn't have that experience that, you know, if you grew up around the, the space areas you have, you know, with you. Uh, so my senior year of college, I chose chemical engineering, not because, you know, I knew what I wanted to do with it. Um, I think I was trying to follow my brother's footsteps. He was off being great at West Point in the military academy, and I wanted to be proud of his little sister, so I picked chemi. And it was my senior year, and I went to the Society of Women Engineers Conference in Baltimore, Maryland, with the sole goal of getting an internship between my final year of undergrad before I start my master's. And uh, <clears throat> I saw the NASA booth at the career fair, and you know, it has this like electric fence around it, and it's like, zzz, like they would never want to talk to me. You know, in my mind, NASA was just this great, you know, they breed these people on a mountain somewhere and then they go work for NASA and they're just these untouchable people and they're amazing and they do great things. I just, I never even thought they would want to talk to me. So I kind of walked around the booth and scoped it out and I realized everyone just kind of wanted to grab the freebies and I was like, all right, I'm going in. So I went in, long story short, start my first co-op tour. Here I am at the Kennedy Space Center, sitting outside on the spiral staircase of the Launch Control Center, watching my very first launch really finally coming to terms with what the International Space Station was, finally, you know, 21 years old at that, that, that time, and I finally figured out, wow, look at all this going on. So I'm watching the launch, and I don't know what to expect. Watching it go up, I see the fiery mass, and, you know, I feel the vibrations in my chest, because you're right there, as close as you can get to the pad. And I realized tears are streaming down my face, and I didn't expect to cry, I didn't really understand the emotion, but it was at that moment when I finally knew, okay, this is, I want to be, you know, on that vehicle, or this is where I want to be, this is where I want to stay forever, and I never want to leave. And so here I am, my 10th week uh, full-time. I came on, you know, after Constellation was canceled, our new shuttle was ending, and I'm a product of my generation. Here I am, we still want to be here and, and move forward, and I'm humbled, you know, standing up here, I'm like shaking in this uh, podium, but um, you're asking me to express challenges we face as a young professional. So I am the real deal, young professional, scared out of my mind, but excited, and I feel like I've been given the confidence to move forward in a good direction. So here are some challenges. When I walk around at Kennedy, you have to be very aware of everything that's going on. A lot of layoffs, a lot of, um, you know, the program's ending, there's a lot of emotional attachment. And I kind of get two reactions when I say, hi, I'm a new hire. First reaction I get is, oh, you're a new hire? This is wonderful, like, uh, take me under your wing. They, it was kind of what was said on Wednesday where I'm standing on the shoulder of a giant and they're trying to let me reach higher than they'll ever know that they can, you know, go in the future. And they're giving me that firm support and sharing their knowledge with me. And that's the power of mentorship. And I've had some extremely wonderful mentors and uh, it's really kind of shaped me as, as who I am and going forward. The other reaction, and this is a dramatic case, you know, but for the point I'm trying to make, the other case I get is, oh, you're a new hire? NASA's hiring? They hired you? Whoa, okay, well, you know, that's wonderful. I'll share my story with you, and I'll, you know, I've had a great, wonderful time here. NASA is a wonderful place, but, you know, your generation, I don't know about that. Um, good luck to you, and good luck with that. And I'm left like, gosh, you know, I, I know, um, I'm, not, I'm not dumb. I know that choices need to be made now for the next generation, for the future. And when I hear things like that, it's a challenge to me because I want to jump up there and kind of stand in the way so I can make these choices because I'm afraid they're not going to make them for us. And, uh, Anyway, that's, that's, you know, one challenge that I face personally, but I'm aware of the situation going on at heart, too. Um, the next challenge is kind of a resistance from senior management to allow young professionals to engage in uh, development roles and kind of develop as a leader. Uh, I understand you definitely need to get your feet wet. You need to prove that you're um, technically capable and, you know, can carry out a task and do well. But I think it's important to have a healthy transition of young professionals into an upper management field so that there's not such a gap in leadership and so that we can maintain that strong management throughout you know, a program, throughout transitions of programs, because I can see it happening now. And I kind of wonder, well, you know, maybe there should have been a proper way to uh, integrate. We're NASA. We're the kings of integrating. So 
you know, we should, we should find a healthy way to do that. Um, third challenge is, you know, we're not in a clear direction, but neither is the rest of the country. And I'm looking at this as prep time, as time to kind of sharpen my sores and, you know, eat up as much knowledge as I can and learn and grow. This way when a, a challenge is made, um, we can hit the ground running. And I think that was mentioned in a lot of the presentations earlier in the week. And uh, if we are given this time to develop and we're, we're given meaningful tasks that um, have high enthusiasm and a good outlook towards the future, you're not going to have as bad of a retention time. If we go around telling everyone to new hires, oh, you know, good luck to your generation, it's going to be interesting, they're not going to want to stay. It's pretty simple. Um, and yeah, they'll leave. Maybe they won't find what they want somewhere else. But if you go around saying, saying those things, that's what makes someone want to leave. And, uh, you know, another challenge is Apollo had the public engaged. You know, this has been, I'm being repetitive from everything that's been said all week. Um, but shuttle, it was kind of lost and, uh, with PR, and we've been talking about that as well. And uh, I think a challenge for our generation is kind of engaging that, not my generation, but the future generation. And, you know, that's, that's a big challenge for us as well. Um, the fifth challenge, generational differences. The average working age of Kennedy is 46. So it's kind of hard for us to, you know, a lot of times people come up to me and say, oh, you're my son or daughter's age. And I don't know if they look at that as maybe that's why they're not trusting us with moving forward. I know there's maybe lack of loyalty. You know, we, we haven't paid our part here yet. So I, I can see that being a big problem. But we're working together. We're trying. And I think a lot of our generation is less bureaucratic as you kind of saw from the other PowerPoints. And although we're less bureaucratic, it's uh, the older generations or the previous generations feel it's a form of lack of respect. And I don't think that's the case at all. We're just, we're just different in that way. And we need to, and that's a big challenge because we have all these different generations and we need to work together. And uh, my generation's here and we're, we're willing to work and the next generation is my generation. And I'm, I'm so excited to be here. I can feel the paradigm shift about to happen. And we're going to have some low years, some slow years. But, um, you know, we're ready here. I'm, I'm a perfect example. And uh, we need your help. So things like this are just amazing. And I really sincerely enjoyed my time here. And, you know, it's my 10th week, so I'm still that excited puppy. But um, <laughs> I, I have no doubt in my mind that NASA will continue to have the legacy live on. And um, so hopefully I can give you some happiness as I, I stand up here at the podium for the future, but I, I have high hopes for NASA, so thank you.